Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I've got the air truck on the table today and I'm gonna share with you the progress that I've made so far on it. So as you look at the fuselage from the rear, it doesn't look like there's much, um, but if you look at it from the front, it's quite a bit different story. All right, so around the front of the Transavia, you can see that I have been doing some surgery. Uh, so just to get, the, let me get the engine. Shoot, the engine I put over here. Uh, just because it's kind of, it, yeah, I dug that out of the front of this thing and it was, this is clean compared to what came out of it. Uh, the oil that was clearly used to revert preserve this engine was all over it and the dust over the years had accumulated uh, it looked furry <laughs> we'll just say that so uh, this engine is for sale it is a Moki engine it is a 135 it's a two-stroke engine um, so hit me up if you're interested in this engine I really don't have a need for an engine this big or thirsty not that I'm against two stroke or glow engines to begin with, but I wanted to take this project uh, to what I'm familiar with and that's reliability. Yeah, I know people who are diehard say, oh, well, you know, if it's properly tuned, it's, it's the most reliable you can have. Not true in my opinion uh, because of fuel leaks. And that was the other thing that I had to do is I had to dig in here and uh, get this fuel tank out. The fuel tank was being held down with some rubber bands and I say was because when I cut this hole in the side of the fuselage I could see in and the rubber bands had rotten out and were no longer holding it down. So that is why you always make everything in your model serviceable. Okay? Okay. So moving on from there. Um, I Once I got the engine out and got the fuel tank out uh really in order to get the engine out it was <laughs> you know I, I i i started digging out once i got these out but you know i had to get the engine out and so i had to cut the cowl off uh the cowl was first i i used my number 11 blade my number 11 blade to cut around here uh eventually got to a point where there are Formers in place. Yeah, so in order to cut that, I had to use my razor saw, which is why there's a little bit of a hack job here. I had to, I had to. Um, from there, once I had this rounded part cut out, I had drawn a line based off of the reference line of, of the firewall, just going up over here. So cutting that with a razor saw was easy. Uh, cutting these lines was easy with also with a razor saw. You can see how the uh, the opening wasn't entirely straight either. And then moving over to this side, you know, there's there's a hole to be made. But then, uh, yeah, I had to cut this as well. So then I got the cowl off and. Whew, that was a lot of work. <laughs> that was a lot of work. But that being said, I was able to get my electric conversion in. Uh, this is the Sunny Sky X4120-7 550 kV motor. Uh, this is, a, I would say this is about a 70 or an 80 size, if you were going to say glow uh, engine. Um, it's big. Uh, it'll, it'll support about 2,500 watts, which is way more than enough power that this model needs. Got a 120 amp uh, speed controller. And I'm gonna run this on six cell with a 15.8 prop. Um, let's see, this is the old Great Plains style now under uh, Spectrum brand. Uh, Motor Mount made posts on Instagram about that and people are like, oh, where do you find that new old stock? No, they still make these new. You can still order them from Horizon Hobby. Uh, so that's all of that wrapped up. I did install a hatch latch from Dubro. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I have spring hinges. Uh, I made a video on how to make spring hinges and I wanted to have those sprung open because uh, it just, it makes life a little bit easier with these little hatches, especially one that I'm gonna be using over and over again. It's gonna get annoying, like 
pulling that and then like having to dig this out. Yeah, I just wanted it to spring open and not think about it. So works every time. Kind of can't see inside there, but it's just the ESC servo. Need to make a proper battery mount. Uh, I'll do that from the underside uh, where the steering wheel servo is. So other than all the rhinoplasty that's been going on, uh, the only other thing that I've really been able to update on is the wheels. Uh, I've been able to add some inflatable Dubro wheels uh, and tires, and that's been a fantastic addition. There's not a whole lot of give on this airplane, and I want to be sure that my field doesn't destroy this really quite unique model. Um, so with that, uh, other than the wings, oh, I or the sorry, the wheels, uh, I have dug into the wings and I want to show you what's going on inside the wings. It's kind of weird. So the wing on the table and all the hatches removed, you can see sort of what we're up against. We've got full size servos inside of this wing and older style FMA S701. Now I looked these up and the torque specs are what I would consider borderline marginal, but I think they honestly will do just fine. Uh, I know there are some people that will always disagree and say, oh, you can never trust a servo. Or you just replace them all and throw them all in the garbage. You know, at one point these were put inside this model and they all match, which leads me to believe that at some point they were probably brand new altogether. Um, so that being said, I've gone through and I've tested each one of these servos individually. Uh, the movements are all good and I've used resistance on all of them and they don't have stripped servos as far as I know. Obviously, I can be a little wary and suspicious of them until I have reason to not be or to like confirm that one of them is bad. But until then, I'm not going to replace every single last one of these. I think that would be foolish. Uh, so anyway, what we're looking at here, when I first popped open one of these hatches, I thought, how in the world did he get those screws in there? What? And then I read, the, it, it just dawned on me, what is that? What is that? And I kept on popping open, open hatches, and I was like, it's the same similar technique. And I realized... Once I got into here, and this was jiggling around a little bit, and I popped off the ball link, and voila. That's how he did it. I've never, never in my years of modeling seen this done. I've never even seen this written about. I Maybe someone has seen it written about. I certainly haven't. Uh, but kind of clever, kind of sketchy. Uh, ske I say sketchy because so once you put this down and you put the ball link back on, what's holding that in position? Well, that goes over there and then there's another hatch that goes on top and so you have the friction holding down here. Clearly a built up bit of balsa to create tension that as this is screwed down, using these two screws so like i said sketchy so i think what i'm gonna do here is possibly do some like angled screws now some of these other ones they look like they've clearly been glued after they've been put in here uh, for example this isn't going to pivot up because there's this corner piece uh, that's clearly glued in this is clearly glued in for that corner piece uh, and just hold that servo down. Uh, same story over here. This piece clearly glued in to hold the servo down. So that's okay, but like some of the other ones that are kind of sketchy, I don't necessarily want to entirely re rely on some basic glue. I want to try to put some strategic screws in place to hold things down. Uh, because the if you look at the distances travel here so this is the servo okay so this is for either the rudder or the elevator I uh, can't really tell which one 
So let's try to move the push rod. Oh, it's the rudder. It's the rudder. All right, so rudder over that long span. That can end up being a ton of play and slop in the line, and I don't want to chance that at all. Um, if you have slop or play in your line, if you get into like a dive, um, like something unexpected goes wrong in a maiden flight, if you go into a dive, you can end up having flutter on your control surfaces. And that can actually make your situation worse where you can't recover. Um, I've, I've seen it happen a couple of times at my field where someone will be going, they'll just be flying too dang fast and the control surfaces will be fluttering and they don't, they say, oh, I don't got it, I don't got it. And then they go in and they crash. All they had to do was reduce throttle. Now, that's one thing, but if you're in a dive because something has cracked or gone wrong and possibly you could limp it back, you can back off of your throttle, yes, but uh, if you're in a critical dive, it's gonna be harder, a lot harder to, to recover from. So that being said, uh, I do wanna try to secure these servos a bit better, but I had to share this with you because it's interesting. It's a clever idea of trying to get these in here. Not necessarily how I would probably go about this. Uh, honestly, I'd have to think off the top of my head. I can't think of what I would do other than this now that I'm staring at it, but certainly something way more complicated than this. Uh, I'll give you that. Probably something 3D printed. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so next after the wings, we've got uh, radio. How am I going to control this thing? And what's kind of cool is that uh, each side or each half of the airplane has four servos, okay? So you've got uh, a rudder, elevator, aileron, and flap. Now, what's neat about uh, that is that's four connections and it's four wires I don't want to really mess with when I plug these wings in and out. This airplane is already going to be awkward enough as it is to assemble at the field. So I thought ahead and thought about wire management and how I'm going to address this. And I'm going to do something that I've never really done before. I've done it sort of, but not in this particular way. I'm going to use S-Bus. And what these are is an S-Bus to PWM converter. And FR Sky makes these. There are also a few Taba ones, but it's one wire that I can plug in and out to my receiver and the receiver is full 16 channels for my radio and then this gets programs with specifically which four channels of the 16 whichever ones i want and it maps them and i i have all my trims and everything that just goes through it and, and it's a perfect solution for this because it will minimize the wiring it'll make things nice and simple and I don't have to worry about anything other than one connection four connections is four things to go wrong or plug in incorrectly uh, so I don't want that to happen this will be super simple straight to the point and get the job done efficiently and effectively so that's cool and uh, the last thing I want to share with you guys is that all of the hardware, I'm going to go through everything here and I need to give a big shout out to uh, RTL Fasteners. They are a new company sponsoring the channel and well, it's more like an affiliate. Um, you know, RTL has been one of those hardware companies over the years that I've always admired from uh, sort of a, a backseat uh, position. You know, you don't think much about your screws, but I'll tell you, there have been times when I have ordered things and they've arrived and I've gone to assemble them. And I'll be darned if I'll be just putting a screw into a piece of plastic and the screw head will just twist torque right off. And with RTL fasteners, it's it's good quality metal hardware that will not let you down. There are specific reasons why you want to go with some of their stuff, particularly like the hex head screws, because there's a lot less likelihood of your screwdriver slipping and puncturing your model. I've had it happen a number of times over the years. Yes, I know how to repair the model. 
yes, I really wanted to swear when it happened, but I didn't. Um, the, uh, the reality is that with hex head screws, the likelihood of things like that happening is virtually zero. There's a lot of grip. And with the blunt end of a hex driver, especially a ball hex driver, which they also offer, it's, it's just a, a good good reason to have good quality hardware and good quality tools. So head on to, uh, to RTL fasteners. I've got a, an affiliate link in the description as well as QR codes. So check them out if you would. Uh, they support me. They believe in the work that I do and I believe in the products that they have. So, uh, if you could do that, check them out. It would also support me and, uh, let's finish up this model overview. All right, so moving ahead now, uh, things that are on the to-do list. Number one, wrap up the nose. I need to get the cowl mounted. I need to get the cowl repaired. Uh, and then I need to move on to glassing the fuselage. With, uh, with the battery hatch and everything mostly wrapped up and everything, I'm in a good place where I can start properly finishing the fuselage and get it prepped for paint. Uh, there's going to be some filler that's going to be required as part of that process. I want to take my time, be careful and methodical. I need to work on the cap part. Uh, I really need to finally sit down and figure out exactly what direction I want to go with this model. Uh, do I want to do the agricultural kind of finish or do I want to go with more of the like air ambulance kind of thing? But, uh, you know, there's there's a, quite a bit of finish work to do. And speaking of finish work. Evergreen scale models, polystyrene details. These these ever, evergreen scale models has been around the block for a long time for static model stuff. But I got these uh, just angle pieces, just 90 degree angle pieces, because there's details like uh, on the control surfaces. There's corrugations there to strengthen them, uh, as well as on the wings. And uh, I wanted to include those details because it does add depth to the model. So I've got those to do as well, even though the wings are finished. Uh, it's just going to be a smart thing to do now before I go to paint. So uh, I've got plastic to glue onto the wings. So there's that to do. This model may seem really close to flying and it is, but I don't really want to rush it. I want it to be a slow process and I want to take you along the ride for that process. So tune in to, to next time when uh, I give another update on the Transavia air truck and keep working on your flying works of art.